The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem, and they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said, A nobleman went off to a distant country to obtain the kingship for himself and then to return. He called ten of his servants and gave them ten gold coins and told them, Engage in trade with these until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and sent a delegation after him to announce, We do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining the kingship, he had the servants called to whom he had given the money to learn what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Sir, your gold coin has earned ten additional ones. He replied, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. Then the second came and reported, Your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. To this, and to this servant, too, he said, You take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you, because you are a demanding man, and take up what you did not lay down, and you harvest what you did not plant. And he said to him, With your own words I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a demanding man, taking up what I did not lay down, and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by he said, Take the gold coin from him, and give it to the servant who has ten. But they said to him, Sir, he has ten gold coins. He replied, I tell you, to everyone who has, more will be given. But from, one, from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now as for those enemies of mine who did not want me as their king, bring them here and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. We see Jesus uh, today in a moment before he enters into Jerusalem, uh, a moment before he is uh, able to show us what his kingship will look like. And in this moment, as he journeys toward Jerusalem, uh, people have uh, a expectation that he will come in triumph and will reign over Jerusalem as an earthly king. Uh, that he will vanquish all the foes of the Jewish people, he will cast the Romans out, uh, and he will take up his seat as the king uh, in the line of King David, ruling over this holy city uh, of this house of Israel uh, for everlasting afterward. Obviously, this isn't exactly what happens. Uh, and so we can look in this reading today uh, and see all the ways in which Jesus comes not to meet our expectations, but to exceed them. Uh, he doesn't cast aside the kingly reign of the Jewish people. He doesn't cast aside the expectations of the people that Jesus would reign forever, that he would be a king uh, over Israel, uh, a good king who would never, whose kingdom would never end. Uh, he doesn't cast that aside, but he also doesn't meet it in exactly the way that they expect. Um, and this is significant, that I think uh, all of us can look for a king in our life. All of us can look for a king who uh, satisfies uh, what we hope for, um, and yet oftentimes Jesus is going to uh, reign in our life in a way that is surprising, in a way that uh, is a true reign, um, that has true power, um, that demands true worship, but also that uh, shakes us out of our established way of doing things, that shakes our notions of who he is uh, at times and of how he's going to act, uh, because he acts in surprising ways, right? And we see this especially with the, with the parable of the, of the coins, that those who have receive more, and those who have not, even what they have is taken away. Uh, this is somehow contrary to expectations. This is not exactly what we would expect Jesus to do in this situation. And yet we can see that the profit that we earn by the way we live our life, uh, the profit on this, ca this um, capital that is given to us, uh, this is what redounds for eternity, right? This is what stays with us. Uh, and what we're given in this life is taken away from us, right? This one coin that we're each given, uh, we have to give back. But whatever, whatever profit we make uh, by trading in this coin, by using the gifts we're given profitably in this life, uh, redounds to us forever, right? And it's never taken away from us. It even actually is multiplied, that this one coin now becomes one city. 
uh, and we enjoy this profit uh, in the life to come. I think this speaks to exactly this experience of Jesus uh, being taken away as our king, right? This coin is taken away from us, uh, but then uh, is multiplied and given to us ever more fully and everlastingly in the life to come as more than we deserve, more than we expect, uh, more than we can even perhaps ask for. Let's pray today that we can uh, worship Jesus Christ as our King, that we can serve him and worship him, uh, and so sh show ourselves to be good servants who will receive a reward in the life to come.